140 gallons, diesel, 2,211 gallons. Respectfully submitted, John Alonji, Highway Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Charlie, you're up. No, we missed the sergeant there. Jeez. <clears throat> The monthly report for January, our water consumption totaled 16,324,000, which is a daily usage of 526,580. Uh, last month, we consumed 15,591,000, which is a daily usage of 502,935 gallons per day. And compared to a year ago, our water consumption was 15,953,000 for the month, which is a daily usage of 514,612. Summary for the month, billing. Bills were mailed out this month. If you have any questions or any problems, feel free to give us a call. Curb box repairs. We had to repair curb boxes on Western Avenue, meters. We had to replace three frozen meters and we had to turn off um, frozen lines at three different houses. Service lines, we had to repair service lines on Prospect Street, Western Avenue, and also on Dock Road in Milton. Sewer, we had to repair sewer risers on manholes on Maple Avenue and also on Dock Road in Milton. We had to also jet out a service line on North Young Avenue. Water mains, we had to repair an eight inch water main on Milton Turnpike and 9W in Milton with the help of the highway department. Closings for the month, we had eight, mark out 16, gallons of gas 265, gallons of diesel 25, and the mileage for the month 2100. Thank you. Thanks, Any questions for Charlie? Anybody? No, nope. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Manny, you're going to do the town clerk? Yes. Thank you. She was going to go do it. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You are here, Danielle. We'll let you do it. What do I got for me? Here you go, Manny. You really want to? I'm trying to get him. <laughs> Town Clerk Monthly Report for January 2022. Burn permits, $45. Conservation, uh, two transactions. $1.11. We had a total of 12 dog licenses for $75. Towing licenses, seven, $1,750. Water service, three transactions, $6,050. Uh, transfer station permits, 17, $950. Punch cards for the transfer station, 25. Punch cards totaling $1,540. Um, building department fees, $11,000, 10 cents. Fire fees for the building department, $985. Accident reports, 14 for $70. Certified copies, six transactions for $120. Park fees, one, $300. And the grand total is $22,886.21. Any questions for Danielle? Tax season, going good? No problems? Going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now it's tax and water bill season, so yep. we're doubly busy. <laughs> it's always busy. Yes. Thank you, Danielle. All right, now you go, Manny. Now we got you. All right. Wastewater uh, treatment. Water quality management. For the month of January 2022, both Marlboro and Milton wastewater treatment plants compiled with most of the SPDES requirements, the Milton facility did not meet the 85% removal of the TSS. The following are the monthly statistics for both plants. Marble water, yeah. wastewater treatment plant. Average daily, daily flow, 107,000 gallons per day, about 61% of capacity. Average BOD removal, 97%, average suspended solids removal, 91%, Milton wastewater treatment plant. The average daily flow, 28,000 gallons per day, about 51% of design capacity, 
Average BOD removal, 99%. Average suspended solids removal, 84%. Both of Marlboro and Milton treatment plants operated normally during the month of January without any major changes or events. The low TSS percent removal at the Milton facility was likely due to the changes in temperature and the low flow of TSS value. I will include this explanation with my monthly DMR report to the DEC. We have, we have also made a change from the two plastic trash bins to smaller dumpsters. This is due to the Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency no longer accepting the screening we remove from the treatment process. This will result in small increase in price from Lamella Sanitation. We have also met with Dennis Laurios and decided on the items we should upgrade this year. They are as follows. Improve influent channel hydraulics to prevent storm overflows. Replace of motor control center due to obsolescence of parts and equipment. Uh, oxidation ditch rotors and rotors covers. These are your main treatment drivers. Clarifier splitter box control gates and valves. Screw pump control valves at the base of the screw pump assembly structure. Oxidation ditch effluent wear assembly. Precise scope to be determined. So the items are listed in an order of importance. It is important to know that these items will not increase the capacity of the marble plant. They are necessary to ensure the proper function of the facility. Overall, both wastewater treatment plants are in good working order but are getting older. If you need any additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me, Julian Falco. Thank you, Manny. So the um, items that he's talking about that we're going to be improving, I've had to follow up with Dennis again. He's got to get everything in place, but just so you know, this money's that will be utilized from the ARPA federal money that we received. We received half of it last year. We'll be receiving the next half of it this year. Um, and we're going to be using it all towards our sewer plants. We already spent it about $70,000 at our Milton plant, and the remaining is going to be done at our Marlboro plant. So these are upgrades to the existing plant. They're not expansions as of yet. So if these new developments come in play, they have to um, put up some money, and those will be for some expansion possibly if we need to. So uh, we're waiting from Speedy because Speedy, uh, Dennis believes we could get 25,000 gallons per day more out of our current facility with these updates, so we might not have to do expansion. So anyway, next one is dog control officer Andrew McKee and Councilwoman Sesha. All right, monthly report for January 2022. We received a total of 11 calls this month, including three calls to service from the New York State Police and the Ulster County Sheriff. Responded to two active complaints and or cases which are now closed or resolved. We currently have one open case or complaint. We impounded zero dogs this month. There were no appearance tickets issued this month. We have zero dangerous dog cases in progress in the Marlboro Justice Court. And we regret to inform you that due to an unfortunate event in Pennsylvania, there will be six more weeks of winter. <laughs> <laughs> As Punxsutawney Phil, the official groundhog, did see his shadow this year. End of report. Well, I think he was right, so unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know, we got a couple of nice days after yeah, that. But. Yeah. Uh, Sessor's report we did not receive from Cindy this month. <clears throat> And planning board report, Chris Brand, I have here. Meeting January 3rd, 2022. Attendees, Chris Brand, Steve Clark, Cindy Lazanzetta, Joe LaFaro, Bob Translito, James Garfiero, and uh, Steve Jennison. Agenda, 
Tonsing 20 Walnut Lane, Milton Public Hearing Subdivision. A public hearing was opened and closed with one resident raising concerns about flooding on an adjoining parcel. Setbacks were discussed. The board unanimously approved the secret negative declaration and notice of the termination of non-significance as well as resolution of approval for the project. Second on the agenda was Pollock Site Plan 39, Main Street, Milton Sketch Site Plan. The board continued a review of this extensive project proposal, parking, fire department connections, water and sewer connections, geological reporting, UCDPW access, Central Hudson utility signage. Building spacing were also discussed. A public hearing for the project was scheduled for February 7, 2022. Third was Frank... Franco's STR 387 Latin Town Road Marble Sketch Site Plan. An applicant asked to reschedule due to COVID. Verizon Marble High School 50 Cross Road Marble Sketch Site Plan. Wireless Engineering Mike Musso submitted a task order for review. Discussion a balloon test was held. Mr. Musso will act as a liaison as coordinator for the test, which was tentatively scheduled for January 29th, 2022, which was done or the next available weather day. Mr. Musso will draft a completed memo in order for the town to avoid any possible time constraint violations. The board authorized Chairman Brand to execute and authorize the above by unanimous vote. There was a conceptual site plan discussion with engineering. The board discussed the Queen Anne the subdivision approval process. Member Lanzetta pointed out this Repensies regarding non-conforming lots. Chairman Ban and the Planning Board Attorney will revisit re the town and Marble Code Enforcement Officer to clarify. Next deadline, February 7th, 2022. Next scheduled meeting, Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. And on that meeting, January 18th, 2022, attendees were Chris Brand, Steve Clark, Cindy Linzetta, probably Transolito, Joel Farrell, James Garofalo, and Steve Jennison. First on the agenda was approval of stenographer minutes for 2020, 12-20-2021 and 1-3-2022. Approval for the 1-3-2022 minutes was granted unanimously. Approval for the 12-20-2020 minutes was tabled until next meeting. Blasher, Harford, 346 Mount Zion Road, Marlboro Public Hearing, Minor Site Plan. The public hearing was opened and closed with no input from the community. The applicant addressed all outstanding issues. The board unanimously approved a resolution of approval to be drafted for vote on February 7, 2022's meeting. Second on the agenda was Franco's STR 387 Latin Town Road Marlboro Sketch and Site Plan. The applicant will address several minor issues and return for a public hearing on March 7, 2022. The board unanimously approved the resolution of approval and drafted for a vote at this meeting. Next deadline was Friday, January 21st, 2022. Next scheduled meeting, February 7th, 2022. Respectfully submitted, Chris Brand, Chairman of the Marble Planning Board. Thank you, Chris. All right, so we're getting to our recreational committee is our first committee report. And uh, myself and Sherida, uh, along with our co two co-chairs, um, I had a meeting, and I think Sherrod is going to give an update where we're at with that. Yes. So the first meeting of the 2022 Recreation Committee was on Tuesday, February 8th at 7 o'clock here at the Town Hall. Present were myself, Scott Corcoran, Arlette Porpelia, who is one of the co-chairs, Jenna Lazaroff, who is a co-chair, and Tara Coupart. Uh, the first item that the committee discussed was the upcoming Easter egg hunt, and the committee decided to hold the hunt outdoors this year at the Cluett Shantz Park to be mindful of COVID. Um, the committee selected April 9th as the tentative date with a rain date of April 10th. Um, Tina is going to be ordering 6,000 pre-filled Easter bags. We are hoping to offer face painting. Uh, we'll also be contacting a magician and a DJ, and the Easter Bunny will be making a visit. Um, we discussed using a sign-up genius to have people RSVP so that we can have a general count of how many children to expect and to plan bags of candy accordingly. The committee also discussed a year-round calendar of events and is working on uh, planning out the events for the entire year and developing this calendar so the whole community can easily see and reference that. 
We did discuss summer camp as well, although that does not technically fall within the purview of the Recreation Committee, so a lot of that discussion was tabled. Um, moving forward into the summer, the committee discussed upcoming events like bringing back the concerts in the park, and the committee also discussed adding movies in the park, both at Cluett Chance. Stefan Mazzola has organized the bands for the bands in the park, the music in the park, in the past, and the committee agreed to reach out to him again for band recommendations and to see if he's willing to continue in that position. The committee also discussed adding new elements like food trucks to these events, um, and we're working on licensing and sound systems and all of the technicalities for the movies in the park idea. Other ideas that were discussed is a farmer's appreciation parade, a town swim program held in conjunction with or at the school pool, potential sleigh riding under the stars if possible before the end of the winter. The committee is interested in revisiting an ice skating rink for next winter, also at the Cluett Chance Park. And I think that is the large majority of it. The next meeting is being held on Tuesday, March 8th at 7 p.m. And the location for that will be the Kedem Winery. Thank you, Sheridan. Emergency Management Preparedness Committee. There's no updates as of yet, but myself and Dave, who are on this committee, will be having meetings with the, all the chiefs um, in the town, the police chief, and all the members of the committee, I believe it's in mid-March, somewhere in that range, to uh, look at updating the, the um, uh, committee's report and uh, expectations of what happens if there is an emergency. Uh, CAC, Mickey, you guys got any updates that you want to speak about? Or I know you talked to me about if we have something for you, but I haven't got any response back from anybody of yet. Have you got anything from your committee? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Mickey. I think we need to decide as a board what topics we want to focus on, and then I'm happy to carry the ball forward with you. Yep. All right, we'll follow up on Sounds it again. Good. Thank you. IT committee, um, our computers have been delivered. Uh, Danny is hopefully coming this week to set them up. This is for the town board and for Danielle's computer. Uh, last year during COVID, most all the departments in the town hall, that is, had received laptops, so possibly if you could work from home or not. And we as a committee had talked about getting the town board laptops. Just so you know, these laptops are town owned. They're gonna be, if for whatever reason, you're not on this board again, they will be turned in so the next board member could utilize them. But these are to be used for town business only and uh, for our meetings. So we don't have all this paper up here and get a little more organized. So uh, hopefully by next meeting, we'll have all those computers in place. So. That's a good thing. Milton Train Station Foundation, I have not got any updates. Although I will talk, I will talk a little of that. We, are, we have um, an issue with the decking down there um, is rotting away. I did talk to a, a few members and I got a few responses back which were positive. Uh, I know they use uh, pine wood right now because it kind of goes with the, you know, the train station and what they used to use in the old days, but it just keeps rotting away. And I suggested we um, get uh, Trex decking. We put it in, it's going to last probably forever. And uh, Deputy Supervisor Appler uh, said he would volunteer to help put it in with myself and whoever else would want to help. So I think that's where we're going this spring. And I got positive feedback from the Train Station Foundation, so that's good. Uh, Milton Land and Citizens Committee, I have not got anything from uh, Vivian, so I have no updates. Marble, did, did you get one? Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's the Milton Land and Citizens Committee. No. Nope. Uh, Marlboro Hammock Economic Development Committee, uh, nothing on that. 
no updates. Meet me in Marlboro. I did get a letter, so I want to thank Sheila because she has been sending updates for the board. So this is February 14th, 2022. Meet me in Marlboro, Town of Board Report. Meet me in Marlboro is developing a welcome wagon letter for new residents in our community. The letter will be including a brief description of Meet Me in Marlboro and our town. It will also provide information to help new residents become acquainted with our communities, business services, organizations, civic, not-for-profit groups, and local happenings. It would also include links to resources such as Meet Me in Marlboro's online calendar, newsletter, business directory, and local coupons. In addition, we will be working on bringing back an old event called Blossom Street Fair in the Hamlet of Milton, creating a yearly calendar to list Marlboro annual events, pursuing electronic marquee sign and boulevard banners, distributing and promoting Discover Marlboro New York, Valentine's Day in February happenings in the news newsletter. Celebrate Valentine's Day in Marlboro, which is today, so happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I know you want to get out of here, so we're trying. Uh, wine tasting, delicious cruise entertainment, gift ideas, health, wellness, recreation, activities, and community happiness, 210 to 211. Uh, Meet Me in Marlboro is working on gaining interest for the FFA Future Farmers of America program in Marlboro High School. FFA is a dynamic youth organization that changes lives and prepares members for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. FFA develops members' potential and helps them discover their talent through hands-on experience, which give members the tools to achieve real-world success. Members are future chemists, veterinarians, government officials, entrepreneurs, bankers, international business leaders, teachers, and premier professionals in many career fields. FFA is an instructional student organization for those interested in agriculture and leadership. It is one of the three components of agricultural education. The official name of an organization is the National FFA Organization. The letters FFA stand for Future Farmers of America. These letters are part of the history and heritage that will never change. Thank you. Meet me in Marb. Okay. Thank you. Now we got the Hamlet of Milton Association Committee. And did you get anything from Vivian? I didn't get anything official from Vivian, but I know she is working on the April event that they typically yep. run at the end of the month. So I think we're just waiting on a final date and final details on that. Okay. And then I think they were also recently discussing the um, flowers and the potting event that they do in May. So more yep. detail to come on that, I'm sure, over the next few weeks. All right. Thank you. Transfer Station Review Committee. I have not got anything on that. Um, I do have to make, a, and I should have thought about this early, on uh, old for old business, I mean on new business, before we get to old business, I do got to add another agreement, and that was the one that I talked about with Titan Bomb for the pier. I'm going to ask um, the board, I sent you guys this uh, late because I got it late. Um, this is just to extend the current contract that we have with Titan Bomb, um, and these are services to um, get the final design for the fender piles for American Cruise and C Street, and that we have everybody on board on the same page. And she's going to be doing some other background work for us, and she's reaching out to people that actually uh, have run peers in the past and get us a lot of information about what they charge and and things of that nature. Her services will be up to $4,950, not to exceed that. Um, and, it's, and the work's gonna be done on an hourly basis. So I'm gonna ask that we add to new business uh, agreement with Titan Bomb for the Milton Pier Landing. If I could get a motion to do that. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right, so on old business, Tom back rehabilitation update. So I gave you some pictures, but um, on Friday we did open bids for the asbestos work. We had some high, we had some low. The low bid looks really good. Um, I didn't bring it tonight for us to approve because I want our engineer to fully make sure that this person that is the low bidder, um, all of his backgrounds check out and everything is good. So I think it's worth the wait instead of trying to rush and uh, yeah, we're probably gonna lose two weeks, but uh, I believe it's worth the two weeks because I wanna make sure it's done right. But if this goes through the low bid, um, 
looks really good. It's right about where I thought it would be with all the work that the highway department and water department did for us down there. So it's gonna, it, like I said, it's gonna save a lot of money for the taxpayers. So I will get you guys that if everything works out on the 28th meeting. Um, but we are moving ahead, everything is looking good. Uh, South Pier update, uh, kind of just kind of in, in the round way gave you some updates. Um, still working with Eric and uh, Brandy on getting an agreement. Um, they're planning on building two more ships. Uh, they're nationally, and this is American Cruise Line. Um, they're very excited about our pier because number one, we have a pier. Most places they go to don't even have the pier. So they're used to actually coming in and having franchise agreements where they're actually help fund building the whole pier, which would have been nice to begin with, but now we're beyond that. So I, I think that we would hopefully be able to come to an agreement for them to fund these fender piles. Um, and it's gonna determine by this board how many years of access to the pier that we give up for that amount. So. Of course, we're gonna to try to get the lease amount, but that's why Brandy wants to do some background check. And that's why I want her to do this research for us is because we don't wanna give the pier away. Like we might think it's a great deal right now, but in the long run, maybe it isn't, right? We don't wanna jump at the first person and say, yeah, let's do it, right? Let's make sure we're getting our, our money's worth, so. Um, so you're thinking about this consulting, is that what you're This is for Titan Bomb, who's done all the work for us before. And she's, Brandy's been doing probably the last two months, maybe three months now, pre, pretty much doing it for free. So she said on this work, she actually has to bring in other consultants and she really needs some extra money to pay them. So that's why she asked for this. She's got everything in the Tommy for the sign off. The only thing we're waiting on still is the final weld um, so that's checks, but we can't do that because the, um, the ice on the river right now is too high so they can't get boats in there. So we're probably mid-March, but Arbon Group agreed to do it. Um, we still held back $16,000 on Arbon, right? So, you know, obviously we're not gonna pay them until we get these final checks on the welds, on the pier. Um, if they don't do it, we'll hire our own firm to do it, and then we'll deduct that from their final payment, and that's if all goes well and everything checks off all right. But I don't see why they wouldn't, but we guess we, we got to have everything stamped and approved by engineering, so for liability reasons. So we're getting there. I think by springtime you're going to see a lot of uh, these things start to play out. American Cruise Line is, you know, predominantly they do like the fall time is, is their thing. But with these new ships they're buying and what he wants to do now, he wants to actually utilize our port through the whole summer. Maybe not this year, but the following year. The time frame to start for building is July to, I believe, September. And that frame that we have time to actually uh, build, because you could only do it at certain times on the river. And our permit was extended for a year. So we do have our current permit in place. We're talking instead of, um, there was a three pile and three pile in system. Now they're actually talking about adding three more. So actually having nine of these because of how long the ships are and Look, if, if we could get them to fund it and we could get it to work, we could get it to work. If we can't, then it's going to be an expensive fishing pier for now because I don't see us spending any more money on this pier. Uh, I had a department meeting. I did explain to everybody what the pier actually cost. The pier cost $1.81 million in total when you actually add in all the engineering work. Out of that $1.81 million, we will be getting $313,000 back, but that means the taxpayers are spending $1.5 million of our own money on this pier. So it's an expensive venture that we all agree to um, pursue, and we want to follow it through and finish it. But just so you know, that was the cost. So, but And we did file the final paperwork for that $313,000. Thank you to Howard Baker. Um, and rosemary wine, and we believe we got everything in correctly. So that's where we are with the South Pier. So Scott, with the new nine pylons that you just mentioned, C Street can use those also, that same design? That's why, that's why the design's changed a little, because when we talked to Brandy about it, it was basically we don't want to design it for one boat. 
We want to make sure that multiple boats, not even just Sea Street, it could be other people that come in. So this actually adds another three pylons to the northern end of the dock. So there'll be three on the northern end, there'll be three kind of midway on the, on the, the bigger pier, and then there's three on the, on the south um, dolphin, as they call it. So that way they're all protected. Um, and the original plan for them, they were actually calling for steel pylons. Um, they're asking to put in wooden pylons. The problem with that is the water level there is 35 to 40 feet deep. And then you've got to go into the, you know, into the ground. So you're talking probably 80 plus feet of, of wooden pylon, which like Brandy said to, to Eric, trees only grow so tall and there's only so many of them. Uh, so the only outfit that she could find that possibly has them is in South Carolina and they would look into it. But she said pot, wooden pylons will suffice. They'd be just as good. Um, but, and of course the cost would be maybe less. Again, you can't get these things so that you have to outweigh that, right? And trees could only, like you said, only trees only grow so high. So we'll see. But yeah, that, that was the reason. Hey, Scott, I got a comment on yep. this pier. Do we, not that the spring is coming, do we have any kind of pier policy like for pedestrians that walk up there and what they, you know, what can they do and they don't do? And There's no policy in place as far I mean, as yet. No, that's something we have to work on. I mean, right now the pier is closed to pedestrians. Right, but it's um, But I, obviously if once we get this, uh, the final checkoffs on the um, welds, yes, this board's going to have to come up with a usage policy right and some signage down there i know jerry's pretty good at helping us with signage and it's a lot of the similar stuff that we have in parks but in this case you know you're down by the river and by its train tracks so uh, obviously we'll have a little more extensive um, signage you know we did get a, a letter back just so you know from csx about the park and the crossing again uh, kind of a a weird email i received because it was, I thought this was a done deal, and they're asking us for final design plans for our project. And I said, I can't give you final design plans until you give me final design plans for your project, because that determines what we do. But in that letter, it says the CSX does not want parks any from 50 feet from the track. I'm like, well, you know that we're having a park on either side of the track already. But so then you read further down, basically they're trying to cover themselves that their policy is that there's no parks 50 feet from the track and if we take on full responsibility if something happens on their track, which is still not true because they're still gonna, you know. But anyway, it's, we're, we're still dealing with CSX. That's my point is CSX is still pushing back. I just received an email today that they still want us to re give them a design plan of the, the, um, the park. And I'm like, I'll give you what we have, but it's not, it can't be 100% accurate because I don't know where your crossing's going, right? I kind of know where it's going, but I don't know for sure. So anyway, they don't have a final design plan yet, but they have to have it to us by July. That's by court order. So hopefully they get it done. Uh, okay, so new business. This is the Greenman Pedersen Inc. on-call engineering agreement uh, with Mr. Lutz. This is... Uh, if you guys want this, it's going to be in the supervisor office. I talked to you about it a little, but if you want any more information, again, these guys do everything engineering you could ever think of. So I'm asking the board to be able to sign this agreement, and this is just an additional engineering firm that we would add to the town's rapport. So can I get a motion to do so? I make a motion. Supervisor will sign the agreement with... Greenman and Pedersen, Inc. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go right to the, also I'm going to ask the town that we sign this agreement with Tettenbaum to extend their services for the Milton Pier to not exceed $4,950, and they will be working on an hourly basis according to what was in her document. So. I need a motion for that. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
And lastly, we need to advertise for our medical director for our camp summer camp. And this is because our current medical director has finally retired, retired. If you guys don't know any of the new members, uh, our summer camp cannot happen without a medical director. Uh, this, is, this is by Ulster County laws and rules. Um, we currently had the position at $17 an hour. I'm open for discussion with the board. If you think that's not enough money to try to attract someone, um, because before Daniel puts an ad in the paper, uh, I'd like to get your guy's opinion on that. What are the qualifications for the medical director? Uh, basically almost to the point where you're a nurse. So it's, it's a, <laughs> it's, Mickey, come on, you could do this. It's a big responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Yeah, it's, it's a very big responsibility so, for $17 an hour. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, someone that was doing this was pretty much retired, and they were just doing it because they wanted to do something for five weeks out of the, out of the summer. Um, you know, we've, we've, in the past, before we had her, um, they used to allow, like, uh, Dr. Fest, I believe, was like, like an on-call um, doctor, but... As of now, they say that's not acceptable still because we asked them if we could do that with Mobile Life as being like the on-call people, which obviously they would be called right away anyway, but they want someone to be there right away. So before they get there that you could maybe possibly resuscitate a child if something happened or like Mickey said, you have to give them allergy medicine. And, uh, so I'm not 100% sure $17 an hour is going to cut it in the current rate. I mean... Stuff. I mean, twenty dollars an hour. I'd like to see just to see if we get anybody. You know, I, I, what do you guys well, think? I, I think twenty dollars would be just to for, see where we go. Yeah, for a competent person. I go ahead. You got Mickey. You got some experience here. Well, I, um, I would just figure out the math and figure out how many hours you're talking about, um, so that you actually have a something that you can put your hands on. Yeah. It's five. Um, like four and three quarters, let's say, because it's a Fourth of July week starts. So, uh, and it's seven hours a day, seven hours a day, five days a week. So, well, it's going to go over budget. There's no, I mean, if we if we increase over seventeen dollars, you know, we're going to go over budget. So, I'm asking you, do you want to go over budget? Do you want to try? Because again, we can't have camp without, but without this person. So, I'm. Um, yeah, I don't see how I'm... So we'll try it $20 an hour, Danielle, and we'll put it on our website again. I know we had it out there for 17 but let's update the website. We'll put it on our Facebook page, and we'll put it in the paper, and we'll see what we can get. Do we offer free camp registration for children of said director, some soft benefits, <laughs> I'm thinking, perhaps? Well, oh, you for that person? Yeah, yeah. we could do that. I mean, right now, just so you know, um, uh, current employees of the town get 50% reduction. Uh, back in the day, it was free. But if you guys are members of the board and you have kids that want to go there, you get 50% off the cost. And the cost itself is very minimal. It's $100 and $120, depending resident, non-resident. It's not a, a, a very expensive uh, week. So if you guys want no one, you know, yourself, share it up. Uh, you could take advantage of that. Go ahead, Mickey. One more question. I know in years past, um, the Mobile Life actually had parking for the children and the children that they had to call, obviously, they left. But that was like a backup for the camp director to know that somebody was available. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that arrangement now or not, but I just wanted to bring that to your Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've talked to um, Mobile Life quite a bit about this. The thing is, they're having such a problem keeping people and keeping people around, and they, they themselves, I mean, to be honest with you, 
Mobile Life probably pays their people $15, $17 an hour, believe it or not. You guys think that these people make a lot of money. They don't make a lot of money. I was very shocked when I have these meetings with Scott Wilbsey. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what they make. And they make their money by working about 80 hours a week. That's why, because they can't get people to work. So unfortunately, the medical profession uh, in, in this particular type of work, um, they're not getting paid a lot of money. And we expect a lot from them, right? So it's kind of a, an oxymoron that we, that we do this. But I, I would say let's at least try $20 an hour and see if we can get someone. Because again, we can't have camp without it. Um, we, aren't, we are still not going to be doing um, the swimming this year or the roller skating rink, so that does save us some money. So there is a little room in there to have that money. We're going we're gonna to stay away from that one more year at least just for now. Um, so, All right, so I need a motion just that we advertise, if that's all right. I'll make that motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. I just got to have one question. Sure. Uh, through uh, Mobile Life, maybe we give them a thing on that and they can circulate it because, yeah. like oh, you yeah. said, they want to work 80 hours. Oh, we do. 100%. Know. We'll yeah. give it to them. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's what I'm saying. We talk, to, we, we talk to them and he goes, well, we'll circulate it, but there, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no one available because they're working so much. Scott but retired, I definitely, right? Scott is retiring. Yep. Yeah, finally, he's retiring. So um, he's been good to the town as best he can. He's always been an honest, honest guy for us. So. Uh, correspondence. The only thing I got, guys, was um, a request from uh, Ed Mackey. Um, he says, I'm writing as a high school track official group. So this is a group of members for the high school track team of 15 members. And he's asking that um, they have meetings every so often. And he's asking that, that they could use the train station free of charge. Just so you know, Ed is a member of the Milton Train Station Foundation who's done a lot of work down there. I told him I personally don't have an issue with it as long as he schedules it through the, you know, the town clerk's office. And I would ask the board if you guys are okay with waiving the fees. Yeah, I don't think it's for the for track team. Means. I think it's for the refs. See, they, they eat refs yeah, the track officials, that's yeah. all. Yep. Yeah. So I'm asking if you guys are okay with... Um, waiving the meeting fee. It's not like he's going to be there eight hours. It's like, you know, what was an he hour schedules meeting. It? I got no problem with it. So he couldn't give me dates yet, but I said I got to get him right away so they can pencil him in the book. But if you guys are all right, I just need a motion to say we could waive the fee. I'll make the motion to waive the fee. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. I just want to mention one thing. We did get a, um, so I, I don't know if you guys, you guys obviously all noticed um, upstairs. Uh, Sydney did a nice, uh, you know, art piece of work for Tony Falco upstairs. Very nice. Um, I want you to also know that um, John Beham also sent us something today on behalf of Tony Falco that he noticed in the hallway, um, the dedication to Tony. And so John actually sent a plaque with Tony down by his uh, waterfall and a nice write-up about Tony. And we're going to probably install that there. So I just want to let you guys know that this is kind of an engineering type of group that we have here is with the Behams. They're, you know, they took their time to actually do this. So I just want to mention that. So thank you, John and Cynthia, for, for that. So very good. Public comments. Any public comments? Anybody anything else, Mickey? No? Good. Oh, go ahead. We do too. I mean, we know tonight's Valentine's Day, so we figure, well, Brian should be taking you out. Come on. Happy Valentine's Day to all my favorite Valentine's. thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, so we're going to get into resolution. In uh, resolution 28, we're updating some of the employee handbook. Um, uh, Councilwoman Sesha brought up something today that I think was something that we probably should update a little further in here. Um, 
So when we, we added in, so, so our planning board secretary, um, she never gets any, she doesn't get any kind of benefits at all, but we decided that, that it's, you know, she's working 25, 28 hours a week, part time, and we're closing town hall, not her, so we're gonna allow her to get the five hours of pay if we close on a holiday. I think that's a reasonable request. But we're also, after three years of service, we're gonna give her five days, of five hours a day, you know, so she doesn't lose a week. But uh, Councilman Sesha thought that we should do it like we do some of our other employees in a tier, so to like, you know, maybe uh, after uh, six years of service, we say you get 10 days instead of just one flat fee. So, I mean, if that's, if you guys want that, we can amend this just amend to, I, I'm not understanding. so right now it's three, after three years of service, you get five days or 25 hours, right? Mm -hmm. So what Sherrod is asking is after, I think you said six years, Sherrod, or is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six. six years that we give an additional five, five days or 25 hours. So you basically, for her, that's a week, right? She only gets 25 hours a week. So we're saying after six years, years she gets two weeks. Is that what they get here? Well, here you get up to four weeks. They get up to four weeks. Some people have five weeks. So How long do you have to be there to get to the four weeks? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. But to get four weeks, you got to have 17 years now? Yeah. Three weeks is what, 10? Yeah. So it's like yeah, 10. Ed, I, it was just my thought that everyone else is getting time and the time tears up with service and this particular position is not and it's a job seekers market as we all know at this point so well, I, I think we should put it all the way out I mean if 10 years should be three weeks and yeah. 17 years should be four, yeah just like everybody else yeah I agree so you want to further that Ed? is that what you're asking yeah I want to be to mimic the whatever the rest of the employees at the town hall get the same the same hours same so the t t same kind of uh Breakdown. All right. Is the board okay with that? I'm fine with that. I mean, but again, it's only five hours. You know, she right. only she's gets five paid hours. Twenty-five so, hours, you know. but she's getting the, right. a whatever. What, what a day is. All right. Her. So making a uh, making a motion to that uh, Sherrod or or Ed that you want to do that, and then we'll see if the board okay's that. Go ahead, Sherrod. I'm going to make a motion that the planning board secretary be able to have tiered vacation time earned commensurate with the amount of time working for the town based on the tiers we just discussed. Okay, got it, good. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Dave, you're going to recuse? Yeah. Can you say that on the record? I recuse. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, so just for the public, I'm, I'm not going to read all the updates, but I'll give you a hot, because we went over this in our mm -hmm. uh, last couple of meetings. But basically, again, we're updating the secretaries, uh, planning board secretaries. She's getting, they're going to pay for the holidays that we close or a snow day, because we're closing, and then we're going to do the tiered vacation. Personal leave is going from two days to three days, which is put back to what it used to be. Um, our old board was mean, I guess, and we took a day away from everybody. Yeah, so but we, I, but I, I, have a, I have a comment, we're Scott. We're giving it back. Yes, sir. Do we ever address, this, this is fine that we're doing for the planning board, but, but did we ever address the chairman's question about... Yeah, you were on copy. You were copied on the email. I sent them he an sent email. sent a copy of the email. What you, the email no, I'm talking about the time. You, yeah. Yeah. And, and what, I'm sorry, then I must there's, have There's an email it. in your... What, what are we going to have certain not certain days till three o'clock no no it's on I, well they have the, she has the option, she has the option but, to do no it. i don't believe so she doesn't have to do that yeah it's but this is what this is my point my point is that the chairman wrote us a letter saying that we have some client applicants that can't make it till one o'clock till she leaves and the, but you okay so just you got to go back and read the email because like i said in my email that's why kathleen nathan's there kathleen nathan is the backup to the She's, planning board secretary she sits right there so from one o'clock to four o'clock, she's well versed in answering any question she's done that job. that's okay. needed for I'm, the plan. I'm sorry, so, I yeah. missed it. I'll I mean, that's back. that was my comeback to him. If she wants to flex her time, to uh, instead of coming in eight to one, she could work ten to three. Doesn't seem like they want to do that. So I said, well, the bottom line is that's why Kathleen Nathan is there. 
She can answer any question that's no, needed for the planning. Stuff. Take any applicants from 1 to 4 o'clock because she's the backup to the planning board secretary because Kathy used to be the planning board secretary. Correct. So, okay. so I, I, I'm very comfortable with her doing that. Um, and Chris was fine with that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, we put in the snow closing uh, policy. We've had this like quasi uh, snow policy that we've, you know, pretty much just spoke out loud, but it was never put into our policy. And it's pretty much following the school district's closings, except when they close, we don't close. We're still on a two hour delay unless the supervisor's office uh, closes down. Uh, and then we'll notify everybody on Facebook and our website. Cell phone reimbursement policies put into place. Uh, work at home policy, this came into to place because of COVID. So now we really want to make sure we have a policy in place about using those laptops and when you could use them. And then we put in a comp policy as far as uh, there was no comp time policy. It was another one of those quasi used um, uh, benefits. So uh, we just put in some guidelines for now. We're going to see how this works. If it doesn't work, uh, then we might even add in further uh, wording to this. But uh, we wanted to keep uh, keep the comp time available to our department heads for uh, non um, uh, hourly employees. But we also want to have control over it, and um, that was what was put in there. So I'm going to ask that we go forward on this. So resolution number 28. There's my resolution. Am I missing it here? You got it? Yes, sir. Sorry. Thank you. Resolution 28 to amend the Town of Marlboro Employee Handbook. Supervisor Quirk proposes the following. Whereas the Town Board and the Town of Marlboro adopted the Town of Marlboro Employee Handbook by resolution on June 25th, 2012. And whereas the Town Board wishes to amend the handbook to include the following updates 311 holidays, updates to add the 311 holiday. Same thing that we just went through. Juneteenth is one of those holidays. Vacation updates. Um, each employee now is going to be able, that has 17 years of service and has that five weeks vacation tier, they're going to be able to cash in five days um, of their vacation, only one time a year. And I'm going to clarify how that works. You have five days to use, only could put it in one time a year. So if you choose to say, I want to just cash in three days, you can't cash in any more days. That's it. It's just three days. All right. So it's one time a year. You got one request a year to cash in up to five days. So I don't know why you wouldn't cash in the five days, but I'm just giving you the clarification if that happens. This kind of goes along with what's in our union contractual agreements. And we're kind of allowing the people that have five weeks to be able to do this because we looked at it as if you're here at work, you're producing for the town rather than being home and it's a benefit. So we all talked about that. Personal leave, I talked about the personal leave, it's the three days. Snow closing, I talked about that. Cell phone use, I talked about that. Work at home policy and the comp policy. So all the updates that we just talked about, I moved for its adoption. Before I do the roll call, um, Supervisor, I just want to clarify for the previous motion. So we're going to mimic. We're going to we're going to mimic the copy policy. what it says, which I have it up here. So so after Jan uh, January first, two thousand thirteen, it'll be um, after six months. It's five no. days. After one year, ten days. We're going to start years, with three. 15. We're going to start, start with there. three years. Okay. And then we'll anything after that. After that. All right, so then seven years would be 15 days that's a big job. and 14 would be 20. So that's what we'll do. What do we have now? That's, that's what it's that's currently. What I know, that's what we hired know. After I'm glad you bring this up because I want yeah. to know exact. Okay, yep. So what are we currently? I don't have it in front of me. So right what, now, six months. Each full-time employee hired after January 1st, 2013 shall be entitled to vacation time as follows. Um, date of hire. Oh, sorry. So after six months of service is five days, after one year is 10, after seven is 15, after 14 is 20 working days. So that's the four weeks. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is gonna kind of mimic this, not exact. So let's, let's do this board. 
because I already started with three years. I don't want to go back on the start with the three years. Remember, this is a part time, so it's so three years. We got one year, seven years. We'll go to ten days. All right. So three years is five days. Seven years is ten days. Fourteen years is. Tw is 15 days. We're not going to give the full four weeks, just so you know. This is part time. And these days are all five hours. Okay, we got to make sure that's in there. So, again, the planning board secretary will get, after three years, five days vacation, five hours a day. After seven years, they're going to get 10 days. After 14 years, they're going to get 15 days. And these are all going to be five hour days. Scott, the years she's worked 50, previous years, she gets credit. Hours. No, she, yeah, she gets credit for. So she may be on her second or third years. It's anybody hired after January? 13, January 2013. Just same thing. So she was here, hired right after that. And she already has, I don't know how many years at this point, five, six years? Six. Six years. So she's getting close to, she's getting close to 10 days already. All right. She's already got five days. Are the board okay with that breakdown? I'm fine. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he recues over there. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sheridan and Eddie, for bringing that up. That's a good point. Good point. Daniel. All right. So that's that's the clarification. You got that? Okay. Thank you. You want to make another motion to make that exact? Sure. <laughs> We're going to do it official. We don't want to say we didn't do it right here. Okay. For this. We're going to make a motion that the planning board secretary will now be entitled to vacation time beginning at three years of service, five days of time, seven years of service, 10 days of time, and 14 years of service, 15 days of time, and each day is equivalent to her daily hours worked. So a five, she has five hour days. So the five, so the days off are also the five hours. Did okay. I get that right? That's clarified Close. perfectly okay. now. We need a second. I'll second it. All in favor, again. Aye. Aye. Okay, we got that now? This is why we do this in the background, Sherida. <laughs> okay, thank you. This All right, is, so. This is a working meeting. This is a tonight. working meeting? No, yeah. that's the next meeting. <laughs> But that's good. No, this is good stuff. I like to be out in the public anyway. But I know everybody wants to go have Valentine's, and we're almost at 9. And Jerry said 15 minutes he wanted to be here. Uh, all right, moves for its adoption. Go ahead, Danielle. Councilman Molinelli. Yes. Councilman Se Councilwoman yes. Sessa. Yes, okay, yes. <laughs> Councilman Kauke. Yes. Councilman Zambito. Uh, well, this is the whole thing. No, he should. Right? So I don't know. He should. He should, should what? Let's let him recuse. Okay. That's a big part of it. Recuse? Yeah. Okay. Recuse. Supervisor Corcoran. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, this is excruciating to me. <laughs> All right. We'll get better as we go here. One more. Resolution 30 to promote no. Mike Stefanski. We did. So we're 20, good. 29. 29. No, 29. Where is 29? All it's my right papers here. are out of order because you guys are getting me all. Let's see. To appoint ethics board chairman. All right. You okay with this one now, Sharon? I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Yes. We're good. Supervisor Corp proposes the following. Where's the town of Marble has adopted a code of ethics for 2009? And where's the, the code states that the town needs a board of five members appointed by the town board? And whereas we currently have two open positions, one being a chairperson. And where is this recommendation to appoint James Kuha as the ethics board chairman, effective immediately with the term ending on date of December 31st, 2025, and moves for its adoption? Councilman Molinelli. Yes. Councilwoman Sessa. Yes. Councilman Kauke. Yes. Councilman Zambito. Yes. Supervisor Corcoran. Yes. Woohoo. We need right. one more person. Mickey, it needs to be a Democrat. So if you know someone. They've only met three times in the list. So we need one more Democrat. Anybody interested? We put it on our website, right, Danielle? Yep. 
So it's out there. We're still trying. We've advertised multiple times. We don't get anybody. James was the last one, so. All right. Are we ready? We're good. Who wants to do I'm, I'm a, I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. I third it. All, right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Happy Valentine's Day.